Thank you very much. Um, I'm deeply honored to be here. Um, and for those of you distinguished graduates, it just goes to show that even when you're 47, almost 48 like I am, you still do what your mother tells you to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm here representing her um, today. However, she did think that um, uh, you might identify you know, with me, you know, more than you might with her, because she's 65, I'm 47, but, you know, she was a, an unwed single mother, yeah, at the age of 17 in Omaha, Nebraska, um, that, you know, didn't have many opportunities afforded to her, and she, you know, got um, such a break with the Jesuit education as well in Omaha, and went on to become, you know, a great success, and, I followed in her footsteps, and I have a deep connection also to Baltimore, because Radio 1, which does own 92Q, and Magic 95.9, for those of you over the age of 35 out there, um, they were our first radio stations outside of the Washington area, so really the first growth for Radio 1. And I, and I bought those stations, and I came here, and I ran them for close to five years, so I spent a lot of time uh, in Baltimore at the AFRAM Festival and the People's Expo at the 5th Regiment Armory and, uh, and our 92Q jam down uh, on the harbor. So uh, I'm really honored to be here with you as you're starting your, your new adult lives, because I started my adult business career here. And hearing the um, details of what you've done and the program, uh, I want to give praise to the uh, Jesuit order for such an incredibly innovative educational model that uh, is the first that I come in contact with it and it's and it's and it's fascinating and and you deserve much credit four years have passed since you began your journey at Cristo Rey almost 30 years have passed since I was sitting where you are trying to listen to the commencement speaker but really wondering when the ceremony would end and the celebration would begin now that I am one of those speakers I hope that you will be more diligent than I, I, than I was and actually listen a little bit. There are two main points I would like to impress upon you today. One is that each of you is a unique individual and therefore you need to pursue your own path, not the path that someone else draws for you. Two is that there are some basic guiding principles that will assist you regardless of the path you choose to pursue. When I graduated from high school, I did not have a clear idea of what I wanted to do. I was not interested in college. I was more focused on starting my real life and making money. I ventured out to California, but soon thereafter realized that what I really wanted to do was waiting for me back home. My mother, Catherine Hughes, started a radio broadcast company with the purchase of one AM radio station in Washington, D.C. Today, Radio One owns and operates 70 radio stations, a cable TV channel, TV One, a syndication company that syndicates Tom Joyner and Ricky Smiley, and an internet company that reaches over 8 million monthly users and includes brands such as Black Planet, News One, and Hello Beautiful. She had a passion for broadcasting and a work ethic grounded in her exposure to the benefits of a Jesuit education. Her two brothers were fortunate to receive a full scholarship to attend Creighton Prep, a Jesuit high school in Omaha, Nebraska. One is now a doctor and the other has his MBA. Her father, my grandfather, was the first African American to graduate from Creighton University, also a Jesuit school in Omaha, with a degree in accounting. My mother started her elementary education at St. John's, which was on the same campus as Creighton University. She graduated from Duchenne Academy of the Sacred Heart due to the generosity of Dr. John Marcu, a Jesuit, who was President Dwight Eisenhower's roommate at West Point. Fifty years after my grandfather graduated from Creighton University, my mother received an honorary doctorate from that university. Receiving that honorary degree was the culmination of her exposure to and love for the Jesuit approach to education, which combines a passion for learning and a zeal for making a difference in the world. Now you might think that having a parent with such determination and focus would have caused me to have my future mapped out, but it didn't. As I mentioned, I moved to California and soon determined that I wanted to move back and join the company that my mother had started years before. 
I started at the bottom when we had one AM radio station and I worked my way up as a salesperson and ultimately was appointed CEO in 1995. That was not the path I considered when graduating high school. But 30 years later, I have a job that I absolutely love. I am energized every day and cannot imagine doing anything else. Certainly, my story is not your story. It merely, it merely illustrates the fact that people who are successful, who have achieved great things, do not always blaze a clear path. The path you ultimately take may not be direct. There may be twists and turns. You may even have to backtrack. The key to your future success and happiness is to have a passion and pursue it with vigor and purpose. When you get out of college, regardless of your class rank or Ivy League credentials, you will be at the bottom of the pecking order. You will have to learn the substance of your chosen profession. Unfortunately, I cannot help you with that, but I can share with you some immutable principles of the workplace that will contribute to your success. First, be curious. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Conduct research and, and learn as much as you can about the subject. Second, always remember the importance of first impressions. There, there are usually no do-overs in, in first impressions. Always strive to do your best work. The more that your work needs oversight and review, the less likely you will be able to move up the ladder. Thirdly, respect others regardless of the position they hold. All employees in an organization have talents and can contribute. Take responsibility and admit your mistakes. It may seem a bit of a contradiction to build trust by making an error, but in my experience, that builds confidence. Owning up to a mistake shows maturity. Have an objective sounding board to rely on. There will be some tough days when you may be more likely to interpret an offhand remark as more negative than intended. Avoid overreacting. Consult with someone whose judgment you trust who can look at the situation and be more objective. And take ownership of an issue. If you are handed a project, learn as much as you can about it, understand the objective, take the deadline seriously. Embrace the opportunity to network and meet new people. You never know who may already be on the ladder and is willing to grab your hand and help you up it. In closing, I want to emphasize that you and only you are in charge of and responsible for your own career. There will be accomplishments. There will be failures. Ultimately, you will be measured by how you handle the highs and as well as the lows. I hope that I have shared some insight and encouragement as you begin this next exciting phase of your life. Congratulations, and I wish you, the class of 2012 of Cristo Rey Jesuit High School, all the best in your future endeavors. And while I know it sounds like a cliche, it really is true that if you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you very much.